Hello there. Hi there, everybody. My name is Jessica Tresnadel. Um, I've worked with VFR since season one. I've been an actor, board member, stage manager, and director. And I recently directed the play Hand to God by Robert Askins. And I was also the puppet designer for the production. So today I am going to talk to you about getting started making your very own puppet. Uh, and going into Hand to God, uh, I didn't have any experience working with puppets or creating them. Um, so I started off, I went into it thinking that I was gonna find someone else to design them. Uh, and I was, you know, doing some research. Um, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos on um, how to effectively bring the puppets to life and just kind of watching how the actors use them. And then I did another show and I met an actor named Bill Olson. He works with Angry Young Men, which is a local theater group that does puppet shows. And he got me started with the tools to make my own puppets. So I decided to take a stab at it and design the puppets myself. Uh, so I'm talking to you today as a total beginner. Um, I've only ever made puppets for this show and I still have a lot to learn myself. Um, but if you want to get started and try to make your own puppet, I'm, it's totally possible and I'm gonna give you the tools to get started. Uh, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, like any member of any production, is just read the play just to read it. Uh, do a read through, just enjoying it, learning about the characters, letting it affect you. Um, and then go back and read it again, read it a few more times, uh, and think about the puppets themselves. Some questions you wanna ask yourself is, uh, what are the puppets' characterizations? What are their personalities? How are the actors gonna use them? How are they going to need to move? Uh, what materials might you wanna use? And uh, once you started to think about these things, uh, you can start finding your patterns and your materials. So the pattern that I used was the Rolly Puppet pattern from a website called Project Puppet. Uh, so on their website, you can browse, uh, they have several different patterns. And uh, if none of those are for you, uh, there are other websites with patterns that was just, um, the one I found was just kind of like um, a standard kind of like Muppety look that I really liked and I thought fit the show. Um, so depending on your production, you can choose between a bunch of different patterns. Um, then after that, you're gonna wanna think about what materials you wanna use. Hand to God uh, was set in the in like a classroom in a church basement the characters were teenagers so for my materials i used brightly co colored fabrics i used yarn for the hair ping pong balls um, just things that you might find in a classroom setting now if we're thinking of our theoretical production of hamlet where maybe the the players would use puppets in the player scene um, as part of the the play within a play and uh, so in our production, it's set in ninth century uh, Denmark, uh, Viking type characters. So you uh, would definitely wanna research what materials they might have available to them. Uh, maybe instead of bright colors, you would use more muted colors uh, of like wools or linens. Uh, so your design concept is really going to inform how, uh, how your puppets look and what materials that you use. Uh, so right now I'm going to go into a list of all the materials that I used for my puppets. So you're going to start with the fabric of your choice. Um, I used a half inch foam, contact cement, uh, scissors, an exacto blade, your puppet pattern, batting fabric, either hand sewing materials or sewing machine, um, some kind of stick for the arm, so either rods or clothes hangers. Um, and then whatever you're gonna use for the details. So like ping pong balls, buttons, yarn, um, et cetera. For cutting the fabric, uh, I used scissors for the, the fabric itself. And then for the foam is where I used the exacto blade because you can get it a little bit cleaner. Um, when you're using the scissors, the foam kind of bunches up. So you wanna use the blade for that. Um, and then you can start cutting as soon as all your pieces are placed. Um, 
when stitching, I started with the head. I did my stitching by hand. If you have access to a sewing machine, that might go a little bit faster because hand stitching can get very tedious. Um, so I'm going to show you. So I took my leftover fabric from uh, Jolene and Tyrone and I made, so this is what a head would look like without any of the, the foam or the detailing. So as you can see, like we got the, like it's all sewn up here across and this way. Um, and then you have the mouth area is open and then this area where it's gonna connect to the body is also open. Um, and so I'm also gonna show you a completed head. So this is Tyrone's first head that he has at the beginning of the show um, and a little behind the scenes fun fact. So the reason that he's not connected to a body is because there's a scene uh, where Jason rips his head off and then he comes back all scary with teeth. Um, and so we have a little bit of Velcro rigged on this head back here so he could tear the head off and then put the new head on. Um, so this is the completed first head um, with all the detailing and everything. Um, so as you, uh, as you can see, we got the ping pong balls, the yarn, and then the foam on the inside. I'm gonna show you. So the head foam that shapes the head actually isn't connected. So you can take that out. Um, and we have, this is where you use your contact cement. Uh, so you can kind of see it's cemented down the middle and there's these little slits here to make the shape. Um, the mouth, it would be a little hard to show you because it's actually connected. Um, so some advice with your contact cement is you definitely want to put it on the foam, not on the fabric. And you have to let it sit for like 20 to 30 minutes um, to let it get tacky before you try and stick it together. That is one of the places I kind of made a mistake at the beginning. Um, I put some of the contact cement on the fabric um, and I like, didn't totally let it dry. And so like you can see a little bit, like there's a little divot right here, um, which fixed, I, uh, we fixed a little bit for the second head, but um, working with the contact cement can be kind of difficult. So make sure you really gotta be patient, let it get tacky and make sure that it's sticking together before you try to um, put the head all together. Cause otherwise you're gonna get kind of like lumps in here, it's just gonna be uneven. And so that's the head. Um, the body is a little bit more simple. Um, you just sew the pieces together and then you have the arms which you stuffed. That's where I use the batting fabric. So it's kind of like cottony and you can stuff it in the arms. And you know, as you kind of stuff it, it can build up and get firmer depending on how firm that you want the arms. And then you're gonna wanna find yourself arm sticks um, so the actors can move the puppet's arms. These actually came with another puppet I had. This is what we use for Tyrone. Uh, for Jolene, we just found wooden rods. So you can use um, a few different things. As long as it gives your actors mobility, it's light, it's easy to use. You can use clothing hangers. You can get uh, pre-made sticks like that. You can use wooden rods. Just uh, get creative. Use whatever works for you and your production. The last step is adding the details. Um, so like I said, I used uh, we hot glued this yarn here, um, made the eyes, that's just Sharpie, his eyes are kind of rubbing off. Um, I use buttons for some things. For their clothing, I just dress them with baby clothes you can find at like a thrift store. Um, and when it comes to making puppets, there, there's no hard and fast rules. Uh, do what works for you, uh, get creative, you know. Um, every production is gonna be different, so allow yourself to have fun with it you know, watch videos on YouTube, see what other people have used. Um, and then my biggest piece of advice with creating your puppets, especially if it's your first time, is definitely to be patient, take your time and plan everything. Um, it's totally doable for beginners, but it's gonna take you a while. So you wanna give yourself time. Um, and definitely allow yourself time for mistakes too. I know at first I was, you know, really anxious to see how everything was going to look, especially I was because I was making three different heads. So when I, it, I just, um, like when it came to the first one, I was like, all right, let's see how this is going to look. I really wanted to make sure everything was good. And I ended up having to rip out a lot of stitches, which can get very tedious. Um, so you're going to just, uh, you know, and make sure that you are just taking your time, you know, checking your progress as you go. Um, 
but you know, you, you totally got this. Uh, a beginner can absolutely do it. It's a lot of fun. And it's really cool to see them come to life on stage and to see them develop as characters. Um, it was a really awesome experience. And uh, if any of you would like to try it, leave a comment below, um, message VFR on Facebook. I can totally give you more advice and uh, send you more resources. So yeah, just, uh, just let us know. And thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like and hit the notification bell. Thanks, guys.